Homer J. Nick here with another video relating to Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition on consoles. This video is not related to any exploits and seasons, but is related to a game mechanic that has existed only in the console version of Diablo 3 since the game was released in August 2014. And this game mechanic fundamentally breaks the game when you play the end game. So what mechanic am I talking about? I'm talking about the Nephilim Glory Orbs. So this is what the Nephilim Glory Orbs look like in the game. These creamy white coloured orbs that drop. So what are these orbs then? Well they, they differ on console compared to PC. On PC they give a little movement speed boost and nothing more. On console, however, they do something far different. Let me show you what they do. I'm going to go to an area and quickly grab uh, some Nephilim glory orbs by killing a few enemies. And watch on the screen as I collect it. So there's an orb. Did you see what happened, what the Nephilim Glory does on console. Let's see if I can uh, bring up a screenshot of that. So as you can see here in the screenshot uh, it tells us when we've collected Nephilim Glory that it gives us double damage. And you get that for 20 seconds for every orb you collect and you can stack that up to a limit of 3 minutes. And you get Nephilim Glory by chaining kills together in what's called Massacre Streaks. You get an orb every 10 kills until you have a streak of 50. At 50 your next orb drops at 75 and then at 100 Massacre Streak. At 100 your next orb is 150 and then it continues to drop at 200 and then 300 and then 500 and then they stop spawning. Double damage, eh? That's what you were saying. So that means the consoles have a huge boost in DPS compared to the PC version of the game. Console players must be clearing far higher greater rifts than PC players with the same build and same gear. Um, no. The reason being that the console version of Diablo 3, with no Nephilim Glory or buff, we do half the damage compared to the PC, even though we're using the same skills and gear and items with the same stats in them. When we collect Nephilim Glory, it doubles the half damage that we do, making it on parity with PC. Thus, we have to collect Nephilim Glory to do the same damage as PC. So why was this mechanic introduced to the console version of Diablo 3? Well at the Diablo 3 for consoles presentations at conferences the console developers Blizzard described how the port of the PC code to console originally resulted in a game that was far too easy. It was too easy because of the control differences. Direct control with the console versus indirect control, the PC, uh, it meant everything died quickly on console. So they had to rebalance and rejig monster health a little bit at lower difficulties. But then that slowed the game down and you couldn't kill fast enough. So they chucked in at the end a rebalanced Nephilim glory mechanic. Now, what was that about Munster Health being rebalanced? Over the years, there has been some confusion as to the differences in Munster Health on consoles compared to the PC version. There are multiple videos on YouTube showing some disparity to do with uh, health pools of Munsters on console and PC version of Diablo 3. This was clarified by Nevelistus uh, Brandy, our community manager on the official Diablo 3 forums. 
She says, there are some differences between console and PC with Munster Health. However, this is only below level 70 and on normal and hard difficulties. Why? It was a tuning by gameplay feel decision, as well as a consequence of console originally having a different number of difficulty settings than PC. At level 70, on Torment 1 or above, all monsters should have identical health pools on console as they do on PC. While Nephilim Glory does function differently on console, it is not a consideration in our tuning numbers for monster health or otherwise. Most of the differences that exist between platforms are mechanical ones, meant to make the game feel good with the different camera angles and game controls that are unique to the console. Nephilim Glory doesn't serve to bring console in parity with PC, its bonus was tuned around the rest of the game, not vice versa. Okay, so I understand that. I understand that in patch 2.06, when Diablo 3 uh, Ultimate Evil Edition was released, that we had smaller density on console compared to PC. We have a different control system and a different field of view. And so Blizzard added the Nephilim Glory mechanic to tune gameplay and make it, as Nevelistus says, to feel good. And I would say that it largely worked back in patch 2.06. The difficulties were different back then. I think it was Torment 6 that was the hardest. And yes, it seemed to work fine. The game was balanced and Nephilim Glory was not an issue. But that was back in patch 2.06. We are now on patch 2.5.0 with 2.6 coming out soon. What have we seen since 2.06? A massive, massive power creep. And herein lies the issue with Nephilim Glory. Its issues become more apparent with the power creep that we've seen. Now let me explain why this is an issue for some, but not all Diablo 3 console players. The Diablo 3 on console has a fan base. It has a player base just like PC. But generally speaking, in broad terms, people who play a console and pick up a joypad and play a game will play games more casually, in a, in a general sense, and I think most people would accept that. But you've still got some people who will play dedicated, hardcore games uh, on console. These people are not interested in platinum trophies or Xbox achievements, but they actually play the game for months or years as it's the only way that they can play the game because they do not have a gaming PC. I'm in that bracket. I'm married, three kids, job, mortgage. I don't have a gaming PC even though I used to game all the time on PC. And so therefore I use a console. I use a PlayStation 4 connected to my TV. Now I've got Diablo 1 and 2 on PC I bought Diablo 3 Vanilla on PlayStation 3 and I bought on August the 14th Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition for the PlayStation 4 and I've played nearly every day since release. I'm in this game for the long haul and I know of many many players. I know of many communities on both PlayStation 4 and Xbox One who play the console version of Diablo 3 very seriously. The point is, just because some Diablo 3 players are, are on console doesn't mean that they're casual players. These players know builds, they theory craft, they post their own builds, they play in groups, they know the meta, and they achieve high greater rift clears legitimately. So, what are the issues to do with Nephilim Glory in the game of Diablo 3 for the consoles. Well, I've spoken to uh, many uh, uh, game players who play uh, Diablo 3 seriously on console. Uh, I've collaborated all the information from Reddit and, and various other forums, and we can get it down to nine issues uh, to do with Nephilim Glory uh, in the game. So I want to go through them one by one 
uh, and if I can I will highlight uh, just uh, what the issue is and how, how big it is. So the first issue is that we do half damage when we start the game. Even though we're using the same gear, skills and items as PC with the same stats, the same affixes, we do half the damage. Let's bring up a high greater rift and see the difference of having Nephilim Glory without Nephilim Glory. Okay, so here I am ready to enter a high greater rift. I'll check to make sure that I have no Nephilim Glory buff active. Let's open up a fairly high greater rift. We'll see an 87 and we'll start hitting some enemies. No Nephilim Glory. Okay. Let's now go and get some Nephilim Glory. Don't need a lot. And we'll then compare the damage. This is obviously on T13, so I can kill very fastly. And collect lots of Nephilim Glory. Back to the town. We have over two minutes active of Nephilim Glory. Let's go back in. Now you see the speed that I'm killing. Instant. Double damage. Things just die far, far quicker. Okay, so issue two is we can only stockpile three minutes worth of Nephilim glory. Why just three minutes worth? At some point, if you don't maintain that buff, you are going to run out. And that means that we have to change the way we play the game, particularly at the end game, at the top um, of the playstyle of having to do a GR95 or GR100. We're going to have to make sure that Nephilim Glory is up all the time. Surely that's not Blizzard's intention to introduce a mechanic that inhibits the way you should be playing a greater rift. So why stockpile only three minutes worth of Nephilim Glory? Issue three is reset your kill streak. You will hear that in the party chat in a four man group that is playing a higher greater rift. Reset your kill streak. It becomes fundamental to the game that you reset your kill streak or stop your massacre bonus so that you can continue to spawn Nephilim glory at a reasonable rate. Remember, as your kill streak or your massacre bonus gets higher, then it takes longer to spawn Nephilim glory orbs. And so you have to stop killing enemies just to reset your kill streak and so that you can maintain your Nephilim glory buff. How is it the design of a greater rift? Where the whole purpose is to kill enemies as fast as possible to spawn a guardian and kill him within all the 15 minutes where you've got to stand and stop and not kill anything just so you can reset your kill streak and carry on and so following on from issue 3 is issue 4 and that is that you can't reset your massacre bonus or your kill streak uh, because of certain skills that include damage over time or things like legendary gems. For instance, what if you're running a pet build or a build that has an AOE skill? Think about a fire bat's witch doctor. With haunt and swarm, that'll wreck any chance to clear a kill streak 
without changing the greater rift floor. And even when you change your greater lift uh, floor, you might find that your follower or your spider queen or your mystic allies from your monk, they will run off and attack an enemy that's camped near the door. And that makes resetting your kill streak nearly impossible. And that has further implications on the builds that console players use. For instance, they might use the Pain Enhancer Legendary Gem or the Gem of Toxin. These gems do damage over time and affect an area of the screen. But if that game, if the game is registering that you're damaging things, then you can't reset your kill streak, and therefore you can't maintain your Nephilim glory uh, buff. And so console players have to drop certain skills or damage over time items or legendary gems in their builds just so they can reset their kill streaks and regain Nephilim glory buff. Now I've got an, a small example of this in a four man rift. So here I am uh, in a four man greater rift 97. I'm the support monk and I hit 40 kills and I try and reset and I walk away I'm not attacking and the timer bar is not going down to reset uh, because of my legendary gem, the gem of toxin, which is damaging enemies still, making it very hard to reset uh, my kill streak. Issue 5 is Rift Guardians. Imagine you meet a Rift Guardian who has spawns no adds. How are you going to get Nephilim glory? No adds means no kills. No kills means no kill streak. No Nephilim Glory Orbs. If you run out of Nephilim Glory, whilst facing a Rift Guardian who has no adds, you then start to do half damage against that Rift Guardian. That's an unfair mechanism. That's an unfair mechanic uh, against the Rift Guardian. And what about if you're running a build that does well with adds? Well then you have a serious competitive advantage. Not only can you proc Oculus Rings, but you can also proc Nephilim Glory Orbs during the course of the fight. So certainly Rift Guardians pose a big problem with Nephilim Glory. Issue 6 is getting penalised for high kill streaks. I mean, the whole point of the game is to kill things as fast as possible, especially in a greater rift. And yet, as I've described, um, as you kill things and chain kills together in your massacre bonus, as the kill streaks get higher and you start to hit 100, 200 kill streaks, then you spawn Nephrim Glory less frequently. You're actually getting penalised for chaining high kill streaks together. And what you really want is low kill streaks to spawn lots more Nephilim glory so that you get the double damage. So that doesn't make any sense. Why do you get penalised for doing something that the game is, is asking you to do? To kill lots of enemies as fast as possible and chain the kills together. It doesn't make sense that it penalises you by not spawning Nephilim glory. Surely it should be the other way around. Surely as you get a higher kill streak, then it will continue to spawn Nephilim Glory because that's the bonus. And bonuses should be given at a higher skill rate, i.e. a higher kill streak. To get penalised for it just doesn't make any sense. Issue 7 is Softcore. In Softcore mode you can die and then resurrect. Well, when you die, uh, and the console version of Diablo 3 in softcore, you lose all your Nephilim glory buff. Now in actual fact, I think that's fair. You need some sort of uh, form of punishment for dying. But in terms of the gaming experience, it only highlights how awful this mechanic is. Because you could be pushing yourself to the limit. You've already fished crazy to get the perfect Greater Rift map, the good mob type, the perfect uh, layout, good uh, pylon spawns and you hit the rift guardian in good time and then you die. You make one mistake, you die, you resurrect in softcore 
and you have no Nephilim glory. In a rift guardian, you may struggle to get any orbs to drop. And you will face that rift guardian at half damage. This mechanic just doesn't make sense on so many levels. But in softcore, when you die, you lose all Nephilim glory. And that's an issue. Issue 8 is trash mobs. This may be a small point, but still valid. Now, when you're playing high Greater Rifts solo, uh, but depending on your build, you may just want to kill elites as fast as possible to spawn the Rift Guardian. You may not want to kill any trash mobs whatsoever. Well, if you don't kill any trash mobs, you're probably not going to be able to keep up your Nephilim glory buff. And so those builds that require just to kill elites as fast as possible are going to really struggle in Diablo 3 on the console version. To have to continue to kill trash mobs just to keep up the Nephilim glory bonus um, just doesn't make sense in certain builds. The last issue, issue 9, is a change to group meta on console for Diablo 3. We're all well aware of the support monk and the support barb and, and, and the roles that they play in the high greater rift clears for four men. Um, but on console, because of Nephilim glory, we can't run traditional uh, support uh, classes. We have to change uh, the build uh, to compensate for Nephilim glory. We've already discussed about certain legendary gems that add um, uh, AoE effects or damage over time which make it harder to stop our kill streaks and respawn Nephilim glory but there's other changes too to the, the group meta and support builds that uh, affect the console uh, in fact I'm going to bring up on the screen here a, a build so here is a build on Diablo fans uh, from one of the players who uh, created this uh, support monk uh, build for, for uh, the purpose of spawning Nephilim glory. Uh, the whole build is geared around uh, the promise of glory wrists and loads of blind skills that then trigger Nephilim glory orbs without the, the necessity of kill streaks. And that's what console players have to do to negate the, the issues of Nephilim glory is to change the builds uh, and lose certain things in order to compensate for the Nephilim glory. So that's all nine issues there. Just to recap what they were, issue one, half damage. Issue two, we can only stockpile three minutes. Issue three, resetting your kill streaks is required to get Nephilim glory. Issue four, damage over time or AoE skills make it hard to reset for Nephilim glory. Issue five, Rift Guardians can't spawn Nephilim Glory with no ads. Issue 6, you get penalised for high kill streaks. Issue 7, in softcore you die, you lose Nephilim Glory. Issue 8, you have to kill trash mobs if you want to maintain your Nephilim Glory buff. And the last issue 9, the support meta has to change. So I think going through those nine issues, most will agree that the Nephilim Glory mechanic and console version of Diablo 3 is outdated. It's interesting that they added the Massacre bonus to PC recently, but not in Greater Rifts. Nephilim Glory Orbs is an extension of the Killstreak mechanic. Killstreak is required to spawn these globes for console players, but it didn't make its way into the PC version. Why don't they just remove it uh, from the game? Remember in patch 2.06, we were only doing T6. Half damage back then wasn't so much. But as the power creep has gone up, Nephilim Glory's issues become far more apparent in a GR100 uh, than in T6 on 2.06 patch. Now Blizzard refused to discuss and change it. And I can, I can perhaps understand why that was uh, the case in the past, because the majority of console players don't really play the end game. But all that's changed with seasons. They have added seasons to console. There's competitiveness. There's leaderboards. There is now lots of players playing meta builds. High end game play. The top of the leaderboards are all about people who can maintain 
Nephilim glory the best. Is that what Blizzard are wanting for console version of Diablo 3? Can we remember their goal that was stated by Nevelistus when she discussed this in the forums with us? She said in the bottom paragraph there, while Nephilim glory does function differently in consoles, there is not a consideration in our tuning numbers for Munster Health or otherwise. Most of the differences that exist between platforms are mechanical ones meant to make the game feel good. Does it feel good? Not with Nephilim Glory in the latest, latest patches. It doesn't feel good one bit with all those nine issues. So what are the solutions <coughs> to this game mechanic? On, on console for Diablo 3. Well there can be many. Why not just remove the Nephilim Glory double damage buff altogether? Or if they wanted to satisfy both viewpoints keep it in for the under 70 level players and on normal and hard difficulties but then remove it from the rest of the game. What about just removing it from greater rifts since that's when Nephilim Glory becomes uh, this issues become more apparent. What about increasing the amount of time that you can stack to, to say 30 minutes or 15 minutes, so you can run a whole greater rift without worrying about Nephilim glory? The point is that the, the mechanic is now so outdated that it affects the way console players have to play Diablo 3. They have extra factors to take into consideration just to play the end game. And that surely is not the design of Greater Rifts or the game that Blizzard have made. So we, console players who play Diablo 3 Dedicated, are asking Blizzard to review this mechanic and change it. I'm Homer Genick, and I'm out of here.